Today, we're going to review deep water entries, including no equipment, giant stride, back roll, trust fall, flip, and negative entries. Vamanos! This video is brought to you by Azul Komodo. If you're looking for some absolutely pristine, spectacular, fantastic diving in Indonesia, look no further. The diving in Komodo ranges from really easy, beginner-friendly dives to ripping, wild, advanced drift diving. There's something there for everyone. So check out their website linked in the description below and book your next dive trip. A few people in my Patreon community didn't know what a negative entry was, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to just go over deep water entries in general for everyone. Also, if you're looking for water entries specific to side mount, I have a video for that and it's linked in the description below. Let's get right into it. No equipment. By no equipment, I mean jumping in the water with just your fins and your mask and snorkel if you're into snorkels. Once you get in the water, the boat team or your dive buddy hands you your equipment and you put everything on in the water. An important note about this, put on your BCD before your weight belt. Okay, never be in the water with just your weight belt on. You always need to have some sort of flotation device whenever you're wearing lead weight. The giant stride. The giant stride is best when diving from a dock or a boat that has standing room at the sides. This is also the best entry for whenever you're diving off something that is very tall. It's the safest one for dropping large distances. <laughs> Don't go crazy on me, please. Add some air to your BCD and have everything in its place. That means mask on, regulator in your mouth, and remember your fins. I'm sure most of us have been that person who has jumped off the boat without their fins on, so... Do your final okay with your buddy check. You'll see experienced divers jump off the boat without their mask, but if you're starting out, set yourself up for success, have everything in place. You don't need to be that cool guy. The best hand position for this is right hand over the face, holding the mask and reg in place, and your left hand on your weight belt or any dangling accessories. One thing I see with the giant stride is people try to like leap off the boat. Although it's totally fine to do that, there's nothing like technically wrong with it, but you don't have to stress about jumping. The giant stride is exactly what it says it is. It's just a step off the boat. Back roll. The back roll is great for diving from small boats which have a ledge to sit on. For this entry, the same rules apply. So have your mask on, your regulator in, everything in its place. Then as you get into position to sit on the ledge of the boat, you want to lean in towards the center of the boat. That will keep you from accidentally falling backwards before you're supposed to. Hand placement will be right hand over the mask and regulator, and left hand can be over any accessories that you have, or a lot of people will have it on the back of the head holding the mask strap. This is because when you drop back, you hit the water with the back of your head, and so sometimes that can slip. And actually, hold on. Um, do I have it? Oh, I do, I do, I do. Ha ha! Okay, these guys. If you are using a mask strap like this, you definitely want to hold on to it when you're going backwards into the water. These are notorious for slipping, especially if you're wearing a hood. If you have it just over your hair, it's less likely to do so, but with hoods, they'll be off the second you hit the water. I personally am not a big fan of using these. I know a lot of people really like these because they don't pull long hair, right? But the fact that they slip so easily is why I don't use them. Just food for thought. Obviously, looking below you is key for any of these entries. You never want to jump in on top of somebody else, but it's important to remember that for this particular one, just because you're not facing the water, you can't directly see it when you're jumping. Do that by asking the captain or your dive buddy. If you have mobility, you can look around yourself, but sometimes that's pretty difficult when you're fully kitted up. You'll probably do the back roll in sync with the other divers on the boat. That's why it's very important to discuss timing with the dive team. Do we fall back on three or on go? It makes a difference. One, two, three, go! If you do happen to miss the countdown, just stay where you are. Wait. The last thing you want to do is fall backwards late on the count and smack somebody in the face with your tank. The trust fall. You got me? 
I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I made up the name to this. I don't know if other people call this the trust fall, but um, it's a less common deep water entry and it's mostly just done for funsies. This is best done from a place that's not far from the water's surface. So like a floating dock or a lower dive platform on a boat is preferred. As indicated in the name, you stand at the edge of the platform with your back to the water. You have your gear in place, however you want it to be, and you just fall back with a splash. There's no real rhyme or reason to it, but there's also no real danger to it. So, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. Speaking of danger, <laughs> the flip. I'm sure we've all seen people flip off the boat at some point in scuba gear. I talked about it in one of the accident videos that I did with ITOR. I, I personally think that the flip off the boat into the water in scuba gear is dumb. Cool guy divers do it. I'm not a fan. It is more dangerous and you have a higher probability of losing dive gear. Don't get me wrong. You can totally do it and maybe it's fun for you, but I personally don't think it's a good idea to teach people to show off like this. Negative entry. The negative entry is a very useful deep water entry to practice and have in your diving repertoire. This entry is used when diving in strong current without a line. Unlike the other deep water entries, you want to do this with a completely empty BCD. The name is negative entry, so you want to be negatively buoyant. That means before you jump in, you need to open your dump valve and squeeze all of the air out of your BCD. I've seen people take the inflator hose and like suck the air out of the BCD and I, I don't recommend that. If you're like me and you have a really old BCD and you haven't always been super great about cleaning and drying it, like imagine the mold that is inside of your BCD that you are just like <sighs> inhaling into your lungs. Ew, don't do that. Anyway, also when diving in strong current, you want to take just a little bit of extra weight than you normally would because it's gonna help you with a quick descent. It'll probably also make you feel a little bit more stable in the water. And when I say extra weight, I mean like an extra two pounds, okay? Like not, don't go overboard on this, please, <laughs> please. Whether it's giant stride or back roll, you'll wanna be quick about getting into the water. With the back roll, you'll get everyone or pretty much the entire dive team in the water at the same time and start the descent together. So that's really easy. However, when doing the giant stride, you're going one right after the other. So you need to have your gear ready to go, mask, defogged, everything on point so that you can jump just about immediately after the person in front of you. Obviously, you don't want to jump on top of the person, but if you're diving in a strong current, that shouldn't be an issue anyway because they're going to be going away. When you hit the water, you can release any lingering air in your BCD with your dump valve. Just make sure that it's the correct one for the position that you're in. If you do a giant stride and you're vertical for a minute, maybe you just do a quick shoulder dump, but realistically you want to get upside down and start your descent. So you're probably going to want to move towards your hip dump valve and release the extra air as you're kicking down. Obviously with this kind of descent, you need to be equalizing early and often and paying attention to your navigation, whether that's just following your guide or the compass heading that you took at the beginning of the dive. A quick descent is necessary. So if you're struggling to equalize, you may be left behind to rejoin the boat at the surface. The dive operator protocols will depend on the location, but this is an advanced skill where you're expected to be self-sufficient enough to either keep up with the team or end the dive on your own. That sounds scarier than it actually is, okay? <laughs> if you can't keep up, you slowly return to the surface. When this happens on a strong current dive, I tell people just to take their octopus and blast some air up to the surface so that the boat knows that someone's coming up. You should have a surface marker buoy and I say should because I know that some dive operators don't offer this as part of their rental gear, but you should have one for diving in a strong current. You should have one for any kind of diving, but especially in strong current, but you can deploy it once you get to the surface. Depending on how strong the current is, you may not want to deploy it from underwater. And honestly, like if you struggled to do a descent and you're a little bit stressed, dealing with an SMB before you go up is a pain in the butt. Just blast some air, 
make it clear that you're coming up. The dive team knows what to look for. So you're you're going to be okay. And don't take any of this as like, oh my gosh, I never want to dive in strong current because it's so cool. I have always had a love-hate relationship with it because I don't enjoy guiding in strong currents because <laughs> it does kind of just feel like you're herding cats trying to get all the divers into the right place. Uh, but diving recreationally for fun, it's really exciting to dive in a strong current. So it's worth learning. It may not be for you, but it's nice to try and to know that you can handle that. Top diving destinations like the Komodo National Park are well known for these types of dives. Castle Rock, Crystal Rock, the Cauldron, they're iconic dives that you absolutely shouldn't miss, but you will need to know this skill to dive them. Well, Castle Rock and Crystal Rock. The Cauldron, you don't need to do a negative entry, but there is a part of it that is quite exciting and you do need to know how to control your buoyancy. So that's it for me. Are there any deep water entries that you like that I didn't mention? Tell me in the comments and as always I'm happy to answer any further questions there as well. You know the drill. You can help out this channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing with all of your friends. If you want to get more from the Azul Scuba community like first dibs on dive expedition spots, discounts on those trips, extra videos from me including yoga classes, plus Plus nerdy book recommendations and other things that I share with that community. Please check out the different tiers available on Patreon. I'd love to see you there. Okay, love you. Bye. Shut off all the things that make noise. We're recording. Oh, you guys can't see her. Oi. Oi. Who's the sweetest girl in all the land? Abbykins. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> what even was that? <laughs> oh my god.